What's up, what's up everybody? Welcome to my channel, Angel Says Life, where I talk about life stuff, lots of music stuff, concerts, travel, and mom shit, etc. Shout out to Ghostface Killer. Go check his new album just came out on May 10th, and I know, you know, being overshadowed by everything that's going on. I love the Wu-Tang Clan. Love Ghostface and Raekwon are two of my most favorites. So check out his new album. Okay, I want to say thank you so much to like, I got 10 new subscribers in two days ever since I put out my last video. I am so humbled. Thank you, you guys. Um, you guys seem to really like this content. You're interacting with me. You wanted me to do Euphoria. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it. That song is fire. That song has so much going on in it that this might end up being a two-part video. I don't, there might be some lyrics that I don't go over. It's just trust and believe that that's on purpose. I try to choose lyrics that I feel like maybe are going over people's heads. I had multiple reactions when listening to Euphoria and they went something like this. What? No. Oh my God. Uh-uh, pause this, pause this. I can't take it. I need to do some laps. Y'all gonna have to turn this off. I don't know. I don't. I. <laughs> what? He is really out here going for Drake's jugular. Like. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna put on my spectacles because we fixing to go to school. Got my MacBook. Okay. Kendrick chose the cover of the song Euphoria to be just the literal dictionary meaning of euphoria and as you can see it says a feeling of well-being or elation that means you know just over the top extreme happiness apparently it is the change in mood the feeling of euphoria and reduced anxiety in the medical field they would say that is something to be really concerned about when people are usually depressed and then they experience a moment of euphoria and unfortunately a lot of people who suffer with mental illness it's kind of the first stop before the process of attempting to unalive yourself, which directly relates to the show Euphoria with Zendaya. If you're not familiar, it's just a show that's about teenagers, things going on, um, sexual assault, drug abuse, uh, family toxicity, friend issues, you name it. A lot of people don't know that Drake is actually the executive producer of the show euphoria i am not sure if there's any other meaning attached to it fabricating stories on the family front because you heard mr morale okay so we know that mr morale was his album kendrick's album that he received accolades for and he's saying that drake is fabricating making up stories on the family front so he's making up stories about using his family members in regards to um push-ups that you're fabricating things right by bringing whitney's name into it and that's when all this first i think the fire got ignited and kendrick is turning up the heat now and is like you want to start talking about wifey i'm gonna turn up the heat okay Kendrick writing about his personal life in his last album that Drake is taking some of those things and he's fabricating ideas and then turning around and trying to use it and throw it back in his face in this diss track. You're not a rap artist. You're a scam artist with the hopes of being accepted. Now this is self-explanatory, but I think it's important to mention. We're gonna see a little more of this as he moves on in his lyrics. There is a pattern here. Kendrick is trying to set the stage for all of us listening is about Drake's need for acceptance and they're walking around in the world and you're kind of being an imposter. You're being a fake. In this case, it's in the hip hop arena. But after this diss track, if I was Drake, I would have just let sleeping dogs lie. Now I am just in your face, boldly telling you that you're not even a rap artist. 
That's it. You're not even a rap artist. In fact, you are a scam artist. And not only are you scamming people, but you walk around with these hopes, oh, with these hopes that people will love you and accept you. And that's kind of that tone is what he's doing here. And then he keeps on doing it. For this song, this is my favorite set of lyrics. My absolute favorite. You had to be alive during the time when this went down had to be privy to this information you had to live it during the time to know so the lyrics are tommy hill figure stood out but fubu never had been your collection oh man that is so fire tommy hill figure was a white man designer with his company name tommy hill figure and he had put his things out on the runway. And somehow, some way, shape or form, he was able to attract the attention of the R&B and hip hop arena of the 90s. So I'm gonna show you a series of pictures. As you can see, he's with Destiny's Child. I will never forget when Aaliyah popped out with this photograph. She looked so beautiful and everybody was like, oh my God, and all the girls, wanted to do that and you know Aaliyah was so tiny that that was actually kind of like a handkerchief. Tommy Hilfiger blew up and everybody who was everybody was wanting to wear Tommy Hilfiger and then so he went from runway to finding himself seeping into the hip-hop scene. So I believe that when he says Tommy Hilfiger stood out he caught the attention of hip-hop culture and then he started working with hip hop culture, but a lot of people felt at the time, the people who didn't embrace Tommy Hilfiger, felt that Tommy Hilfiger was monopolizing on black culture. Oh, never had been. My bad. <laughs> that, where was I? Absolutely monopolizing on hip hop culture and using it to his advantage, also utilizing his whiteness to like get ahead, but stealing ideas from, he got accused of that, uh, from this culture that he was not a part of, right? And it made him stand out. And I think that directly relates to what Kendrick has always been saying about Drake, that he is a culture vulture, that he is pretending, inserting, himself a lot like Tommy Hilfiger did into a culture that wasn't naturally his own it was not a culture that he grew up in it's not a culture that raised him it's not a culture that he experienced after all the popularity with Tommy Hilfiger and he had a good run towards the end he um, was accused of having said racist things I can't remember I think the the rumor at the time was that he said something that was really curious uh, and kind of made you go hmm, on the Oprah show. Since then, people have said that this is not true. Uh, if you want to do some more research into this, go ahead. I'm telling you that Tommy is actually making a comeback and he's making a comeback in hip hop. I guess ASAP Rocky was seen wearing a Tommy Hilfiger shirt and I believe SZA was seen wearing something Tommy and so now they're announcing like this resurgence of Tommy Hilfiger and now they're saying people have done the research and Tommy in fact was not a racist and he in fact did not say these things about the black community so I don't really know what is truth and what is fiction the next line is but FUBU F-U-B-U never had been your collection all right FUBU was an all black owned, like hip hop style street dress brand. A lot of people would say that FUBU is the grandfather of streetwear. Um, they were what you would consider underground. They did make it uh, into the you know hip hop world. They did make it. Uh, one of their biggest ambassadors is LL Cool J. Um, but a lot of people were FUBU. Um, and to be quite honest with you, growing up when I was in high school, there was a few people that wore Tommy, but honestly, most kids were wearing FUBU 
every now and again kids would kind of get a hold of something Tommy it was usually like a hoodie uh, maybe the Tommy jeans were pretty popular FUBU F-U-B-U stands for for us by us okay so that right there that statement for us by us meaning for black people by black people Okay, now FUBU, of course, didn't discriminate. Anybody could wear their clothes. Assert here, this is Justin Timberlake. <laughs> okay, but they were proud to say this is a black realized, black owned, and black run company for black people. And they were proud of it. Trying to bring FUBU to the runway. That's one of the original founders of FUBU, if you might recognize him if you watch Shark Tank. He talks a lot about experiencing racism in the fashion setting, having to try to prove himself just to be in the same spaces as people like Tommy Hilfiger. This is why this is my favorite because this is so multifaceted. This is so deep because check this picture. Okay, Drake was photographed wearing FUBU. Like even the owners are kind of like, that just, I don't know, make it make sense. FUBU is having a resurgence. Also, I'm gonna put a link to the FUBU website down below. These lines were some of the most important things that were said because it really does resonate with this idea of how deep cultural appropriation and uh, like this idea of being a culture vulture, like how deep it actually goes in your collection. Like literally we all have, you know, a collection of shoes or a collection of jeans, like in the literal sense of in your collection, but then to collect something means to bring something in right to yourself, to collect something, to bring things to yourself, to hold on to, right? Think about how deep that is. He's saying FUBU had never been, your collection meaning something that was for us by us was never in your collection yeah let that sit for a minute i make music that electrify them you make music that pacify them okay listen kendrick is electrifying the industry right now he's electrifying us with everything that he's done he's left us all in shock when you make music that pacify them been known to create literal music for the people you know all the protest movements of 2018 um i mean we gonna be all right was it is the people's anthem of that time on the timeline of of things that have happened in, in this world for me that song puts me right back to marching in the streets in 2018 all right. we gonna be all right. And so he's saying, I electrify, right? To electrify is to amaze, but it's also to, to if you think of being electrocuted, you're getting uh, pumped full of this energy. So he's saying he electrifies, right? But Drake pacifies. And what do you do when you pacify? The literal meaning to pacify means to, it says to qual like our, to, to dumb down or to bring down anger or feelings of discontentment in people, to pacify the people. Instead, you don't deal with what's going on with the people or with the culture, you pacify it and you do something else. When Drake is not reading the cultural room and he's making lyrics that say, you Kendrick rap like you're freeing the slaves, that is kind of exactly what Kendrick is saying right here. That is literally the example of what he is talking about. Okay. And I feel like now it's going to start picking up speed here, right? And and so he says in response to the previous lines, right? Then he says, "I can double down on that line." What does it mean to double down? down means to like I'm gonna go harder when I double down on something I'm making sure I'm putting emphasis on it okay so he's saying I could double down on that line that I just said about you pacifying them but I'm gonna spare you this 
time. Kendrick gave him warnings. He gave Drake warning after warning. Drake should have heeded that warning, but he didn't. He kept going. I was like, I can't take it. This was one of the moments where I paused it. That's random acts of kindness. <laughs> oh man, that's <laughs> so good. Let's talk about random acts of kindness, okay? Random acts of kindness are when you go and you do something for someone, you do them a service, something that is kind, something that's helpful, something that's thoughtful, but you don't do it so that other people can see. You don't do it so that you receive something from someone else like recognition, some kind of fame for being kind. You so he's saying, I could double down on everything that I'm saying about you, but I'm gonna pass this time. I'm giving you a pass this time. Random act of kindness, right? Love it. Hey, it's editing me. Ooh, I could not go on any longer. <laughs> that was a long day of filming, so.